Hey folks, Daniel here. Welcome to video number 16 for the series that corresponds to the book Road of Happy Destiny coming out next year. That's 2022. In this video I'd like to talk about idolatry because I think I have some key points here that might be helpful. And I don't have anything prepared specifically other than the topic itself, so I'm going to wing it as I usually do and kind of just speak from the spirit here. Um, but everything that I ever had in my life that was a distraction from God became an idol in one form or another. If it was material possessions, if it was going after drugs and alcohol, if it was going after um, the gym, uh, gambling, shopping, sex, I mean, just anything, even my own family, my own goals, aspirations and dreams, education, um, success in business, uh, money in general, food, pleasure of any kind that distracted me away from keeping God first in my life became an idol. That's just what idolatry is. And God hates that with a passion. He says, do not have any gods before me. Well, we're turning everything in our lives into a God if we place it higher than him in our terms of or on our list of priorities and where maybe we don't do that deliberately and I don't think it matters the fact is is that it's happening and it needs to stop and the way that that happens for me was a or finding that answer was extremely difficult to do but I did find it now one example that I think is important is um, is my daughter my daughter means more to me than anything that exists in this world outside of God um, I mean it's not outside of but apart from God there's nothing that means more to me than her, period. And it's always going to be that way. Uh, I mean, I've, I've been offered six-figure jobs before, that, but they wanted to take me away from my daughter for long periods of time. Never going to happen. Planet Earth does not contain enough gold to pull me away from that little girl. I think you get the weight of what I'm saying most parents would. But my pursuit of going after her, after I had um, spent a long time away from her and, not, and didn't have a, much of a way back. I mean, I was an addict and a junkie, and after... Her mom left. I didn't know how to handle that. I um, I didn't know how to cope with that, and I used it as an excuse to feel better about life. And I got back into drugs and alcohol, and I was gone for a long time. I would stop and try to get back, and I wouldn't be able to see her anyway. And so then I'd get depressed and go back out and use again. And anyway, I was chasing God the whole time too. But my daughter was more important in my mind and in my heart. And I was never going to be able to devalue my daughter in order to put her below God. But what I was able to do was keep my daughter where she was and maybe even bring her up a little bit. But instead what I did, instead of bringing her down, was elevate God. I have made him more important than he was before to the point where now he is more important than anything else in my existence, in my world. He's the most important thing. My daughter is a close second, but God is more important. And I love him more. And that's weird for me to even say because I never thought it would be possible to love anything or anybody more than my child. But I do love God more because I'm realizing what he's done for me and the cost that he paid. The sacrifices. All these years of still being with me. Going through every step of the way with me. Even when I felt like I was completely and utterly alone. Going through an agony that I can't describe in words. He was still there in me experiencing it too. So whatever it was in your life that was the most traumatic and tragic and difficult time in your life... He was still there. If you weren't a believer at the time, maybe he wasn't inside of you, but he was right there next to you watching, trying to get your attention to help you. And maybe that is offensive because it was so bad. Nonetheless, he was aware of it, and he, I'm sure he wanted to stop it. But bad people do bad things. And free will is a thing that can't be messed with for a lot of reasons, very often anyway. Anyway, off that soapbox. So again, I have goals and aspirations and dreams that I want to accomplish in this life. Well, when they distract me from God and keep me from acknowledging Him in all of my decisions and choices before I make them, then it's an idol. Getting a master's degree in whatever it is that I'm getting it in right now, it's business, but whatever, um, that's great. But when it was a distraction that kept me from focusing on Him, problem. A lot of us will go through some pretty tough stuff and get pretty desperate before we get to the level of uh, maybe I should pray and get God on the team well maybe make that the first resort instead of the last that's what I'm doing now in every decision that I make I consult God first that's an extreme Not I'm going to say maybe 80% of the decisions that I need to make I consult God first and I try not to make better choices surprise right well 
I don't really have so much for idols in my life anymore. I finally started making my relationship with God more important than anything else that exists. And then now, all the stuff I was chasing after all those years trying to fulfill on my own, do it in my way, in my timeline, or on my timeline, you know, it was never going to work. I was never going to achieve success the way that I wanted it to be without putting God first. It's built into the way the universe works that way for a reason. But now that I'm placing him first, he's like, hey man, thank you. It's about time. I've been chasing you forever. You're back now. Awesome. Now you can have all your stuff. You can have it now. It's a, it's a gift. And, you know, I didn't do all those things in terms of going after God to receive a gift. I didn't do that. I did it for peace, and I did it for to give him glory, you know, give him recognition, give him appreciation and thanks, and thanks for what he's done. I, that, I started going after God for those reasons, and I was tired of being in pain. I was sick and tired of being sick and tired. Some of us can relate to that phrase, and those in recovery are pretty familiar with it. Sick and tired all the time. Just tired of that. Tired of chasing a dream that was never going to happen. Started chasing God. Now all the stuff that I wanted in my life, I'm starting to get. Like 10 years ago, looking forward from 10 years ago, I would want to be in exactly the place I am now. I screwed off more than 10 years of my life being an addict and a junkie and a drunk and just a garbage person. You know? Um, generally speaking, I mean, I didn't go out and hurt people, you know, deliberately or directly that way, but you get my point. So... The idolatry in my life disappeared when I made God more important than everything else in it. It's hard to have an idol above God when God's the most important thing in your life. So maybe you can't devalue what you really appreciate and love. You have a passion for a reason. God made you unique for a reason. He wants you to want what you want. And he wants you to have what you want. With one condition. Make him more important than the car or the house or the relationship that's not with him. Make him more important and all this other stuff will be added unto you. It says that in scripture. So why that was so difficult and took so long for me to understand or grasp is beyond me. But I don't care because I have it now. I am where I wanted to be today, 10 years ago, even though I messed up in the last 10 years, more or less. You know, on and off, just making bad decisions. God fast forwarded my timeline a decade in an extremely short amount of time and he can do the same thing for you too. So I'm begging of you just because I care about you, whoever you are. I care about everybody. So does God. God knows you intimately and loves you way more than I could ever even think about wanting to, you know, love a random strange per strange person. You know, I just I have a deep concern for people and I want you to have what I have. So do one thing, acknowledge God before you do anything at all. Just consult him and if you don't hear his voice right away, that's fine. The fact that you consulted him in many cases is enough and then you'll start to hear the answers. You'll start to realize that the choices you make after you've acknowledged him are the right choices even though it doesn't sound like you heard his voice in your head, oh, make this choice. No, you just had to make a decision based on an educated guess maybe or whatever you want to call it. Nonetheless, God arranged it to where you would make the right decision because you consulted him first. So give it a try. It will work. It may not happen the way that you imagine it will. But you're not the one running the show. You can try all you want. But when we try to arrange life to suit ourselves, it doesn't work and we wonder why. So let's let the director that created all this, let's, him run, let's let him run the show that he made. We are but actors, if anything at all. And so what we need to do is make wise choices. Be good actors. You know, Take a part in the bigger story, the bigger picture, and try to make a difference in the lives of those around us. Because remember, life is about four things. Loving God, learning, helping others, and helping others to do the same thing. So, may God bless you abundantly and continually. Continually and abundantly beyond what you already deserve. May he bring restoration and redemption into your life. And may you enjoy the rest of this day. Thank you for watching.